Hey guys, Will Royal here. I just wanted to take a moment today and show you this one simple thing that you can do for your music festival to immediately increase your profits. And I mean guaranteed increase your profits big time in a major way. You all know what EBITDA is, and if you don't, it means earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization. That is the number one metric on your P&L that says how well and healthy your business is doing, right? It's, it's telling you exactly how much money you're making. So today I want to show you how you can guarantee to increase your EBITDA on your P&L and take home more profit for your music festival. So let's jump right in. Uh, I'm actually going to show you, because a lot of people who have music festivals also do shows throughout the year. They do smaller shows, they rent venues, things like that. So I'm going to show you what your business would look like if you apply this same technique, not only across your music festival, but across any other smaller shows that you might do throughout the year as well. So I wanted to start by saying that the average festival price in the United States today is about $240 for a weekend camping event. Uh, in some major cities, obviously, it's much more, and in other places or smaller festivals, it's much less. But a music festival goes about $240, so I'm going to put that here. We can put any number into this as we want. And uh, I'm going to use the number of 5,000. It tends to be uh, a good average independent music festival, but of course, we can change this to 10,000 or you know, any other number we wish. But let's, and, and this works just the same, doesn't matter how big or small your event is. And the average number of tickets is two, right? Everybody doesn't go to the festival by themselves. Some people order their ticket on their own, um, but sometimes you get orders of three, four, or more. But let's say the average number of tickets on each order is two. So with a, a typical ticketing company, this is what a deal might look like. You're going to be charged a platform ticket service fee. Maybe that fee is 6% plus a dollar per ticket. And maybe there's a cap of, let's say, $5 to the fees associated with it. Now these numbers, by the way, are from a real deal, which we helped uh, in regards to getting more profit for their festival with this tactic. So uh, these are real numbers from a ticketing company. Yours might vary a little bit, but nonetheless, it will work. Royalty, $12. So this actually goes back to the music festival, right? They can add this into this fee and it's not really a fee. It's just, you know, more money for the event creator. Uh, the shipping fee, $11 uh, to send out, let's say, a wristband, whatever it might be. And then tax of 7 and 3 quarter percent in this district. And credit card processing was 3.5% processed by the ticketing company. So they were adding 3.5% for credit cards. It works out to $9.93. And so the customer would see a $240 price tag and then get hit with a fee of $37.93 at checkout. Of course, high fees at checkout, we know none of us like to pay those, it leads to unhappy customers, and sometimes the customers just simply can't afford it. They were saving money. We all know that some of these you know, wooks and hippie kids are scrounging their last dollar to get to the festival, and so they scrounge up $240, they get to checkout, and voila, they cannot purchase their ticket. Taxes paid by the customer, another $20.77. So, you know, the total price of this ticket is actually $298.70, not 240 that was advertised. That leads to really unhappy customers and lower conversions. Think of it, it's like the free shipping model, okay, in e-commerce. Before free shipping, we all used to hate to pay shipping online. Now, the cost of shipping is built into the product and by including it, we get to check out when the price is the same thing that the retailer told us it was going to be. And as such, we have a tendency to check out. Conversions are much higher. We end up much happier because there's no bait and switch at checkout. In this case, the customer is going to get hit with $57 in additional fees they didn't expect. This is, this is a big conversion killer here. So uh, nonetheless, let's take a look. $25,000 was paid to the ticketing company in fees. Uh, fees paid for credit card processing almost hit $50,000, $49,659.75. Total gross monies collected by the promoter at this point was $1.4 million and change, right? $1,418,850.00.
Before we hit to this number, which is our wonderful number of increase in profit for this uh, small festival here, let's look at what happens when you use a ticketing company that has zero ticket service fees, no ticketing fee collected by the company, okay? Previous ticketing service fee, $5, all right? We're gonna do an apples to apples comparison here, $5. 6% plus a dollar per ticket, but now, this is kept by the promoter. So the ticketing company doesn't get this. This is extra money in the promoter's pocket. The royalty, we can actually increase the royalty by $1.40. Why can we do that? Well, our credit card processing is going to be lower. So we have the same shipping, same tax, right? But our credit card processing is lower. We can use something like Stripe, which is only 2.9% and 30 cents per transaction built into the ticket base price. So. The price that we would list to the customer in this case with a no fee company is 277.82. All right, 277.82. So a little higher than the 240, but definitely not the 300. We're still uh, listing a final price. And when they get to checkout, there's zero fees. So there's no bait and switch. That means the customer gets there and they say, oh, it's 277.82. That's exactly what I thought it was going to be. And then we add tax on top of that. Uh, we could advertise the price and include the tax if we wanted to to get even closer to this original number. Um, but I think everybody's used to paying tax. They understand that that goes to the government. Everybody's used to paying tax. It, it doesn't seem like a bait and switch like a, like a ticketing fee does that we all know have these royalties in it, right? We all know that more, a lot of this money is going to the event creator anyway. Anyway, so a no fee ticketing company, regardless whether you put the fee in or not, Let's see what happens to your EBITDA. Total ticketing fees paid to the ticketing company. Well, it's zero, there's no ticketing fee. Fees paid to Stripe for processing at a lower rate is now $42,115.38. And the total gross monies collected by the promoter is $1,451,392. That's a difference collected of $32,542.50 that the festival gets to keep. That's right, they get to keep that. Let's take a look at what happens to these numbers when you have a 10,000 person festival. $65,000 more in your pocket. I don't know about you, but I would love to have another $65,000. Let's take a look and see if it's a 12,000 person festival. $78,000. There's a ton of money here to be left on the table uh, that you could be earning for your festival with no additional expenses attached to it. This is pure profit. This is increase in EBITDA. Let's take a look at the show calculations. So if you have uh, several shows that you do throughout the year and it totals up to 5,000 tickets over the course of the year at an average of $25 a ticket, with two tickets on each order because people like to go together. It's the same the same deal, right? I just I just used the same numbers from the last presentation. And take a look what happens. $12,500 more in your pocket. That is that's insane. That's an insane amount of money. Let's add both of those together now. Where were we at? 12,000 tickets. Let's lower this back down to 5,000 to start. And go back to our two-year EBITDA. Here's the calculation. This is additional revenue from your festival business over two years, 65 grand. Additional revenue from your show business over two years. And the ticketing company will operate on a subscription fee. So you pay them a one-time subscription to get access to it. You can sell as many tickets as you want. So we are calculating in something for the ticketing company here. And you still are guaranteed to add to your EBITDA, to your profit at the end of the year, $80,585. Sorry, this is a two-year deal. At the end of two years, $80,000, $80, almost $40,000 a year. That's not all, folks. Check it out. When you switch from your ticketing company's processing, they love, you know, when you use them for processing, they love holding on to some of that money, sometimes all of that money until the show happens, which hurts your cash flow. When you use Stripe, you get a three to five day rolling processing time and nothing's held by the ticketing company. You get 100% of your money paid out immediately to your bank account. It, you know, it takes three to five days to get there, but they're paying it out immediately. Then you're not, you're not losing anything. You got all your cash to work with. Promotix is a fee-free ticketing company. And by the way, down here, this is a one-year calculation, so it shows you there's your $40,000, right? 
Promotex is a fee-free company. I want to talk about this for a second because this is one of the options that you can use to guarantee that you're going to increase your EBITDA. If you use Promotex, they have a lot of other tools that the typical marketing company does not have. For example, if you, if you get the professional package, which the subscription fee would cover here, you get a dedicated client success manager. This is like a part-time marketing employee that's gonna run some of the campaigns and set them up and use the networks to drive sales for your business. So consider it like a $20,000 you know, uh, value add. You're also gonna get a Spotify Artist Insights module. This module allows you to see exactly who your attendees are listening to on Spotify. You know what that does for you? It allows you to book the artists that are most popular with your database through data, through the use of data. That means you're guaranteed to make the right choices for the lineup and book the artists that are gonna sell the most tickets. It also allows you to see what artists are quoting more than they're worth, right? Because if an artist quotes you a certain amount and you see that not that many people are listening to it in your database, probably not a good deal. You don't want to you don't want to purchase that artist. Backwoods Music Festival in Arkansas lowered their artist booking expense line item in the budget by $130,000 one year and still increased sales by 20%. So they lowered their artist booking budget and increased the total ticket sales and revenue by 20%. That was a $260,000 value year over year, right? If there's two years, then they're gonna get $260,000 worth of additional value out of that. Backwoods also sold a net $149,600 in additional tickets through an ambassador program, an ambassador network that exists on Promotix. So, Promotex is not just a ticketing company. It has a built-in ambassador network of fans of music who love going to festivals that are willing to promote your festival for you and help you sell tickets right now. You can recruit these guys to go hand out posters, flyers, post on social media. You can lower your social media advertising budget and get all this organic reach. Backwoods sold an extra $150,000 in a year. So over two years, that would equate to another $299,000 in ticket sales. Backwoods also sold an additional $62,000 the day they put tickets on sale tracked to a contest registration page. What this module in Promotix does is it helps make your event go viral. So we all want our on sales to be the biggest, baddest on sale where everybody knows about it and tickets are flying off the shelf and we're crashing the servers. The way to do that is to get the hype up about the event prior to. This is before the lineup's even released. You can get the hype up through a viral contest registration page. And as soon as tickets go on sale, everyone who registered is going to get a notification and they're gonna invite all their friends and they're gonna buy tickets. Backwoods makes about $124,000 more using Promotix over two years because of this feature. And finally, the Promoter Festival mobile app. Uh, Backwoods was paying Olumpa $15,000 a year for a mobile app, and there's one included in Promotix at no cost. So they're saving $30,000 over two years with that feature. So possible value added to EBITDA using Promotix is another $733,000 over the course of two years, bringing the grand total to $813,785 more over two years. This is why this festival has gotten so profitable compared to other events out there and has with, been able to withstand the test of time, coronavirus, and these sorts of issues. So guaranteed, you can, even if you don't do these other things, even if these numbers are different for you and they don't work out the same as it did for Backwoods, which it's going to do something for you, right? They're all included, you get to use them. It, it's going to do something, some sort of increase. Maybe it's 500,000, maybe it's 400,000, who knows, but it's some sort of increase. But you can guarantee an increase in your EBITDA by simply using a fee-free ticketing company. Promotix is one of those companies. There might be some others out there. Those other companies may not have these features. I don't know, but do yourself a favor and use a free ticketing company. You don't need to pay 
Eventbrite and Ticketmaster and all these other companies, these high ticket service fees, you can guarantee an increase in your festival's profit by using that. Let's take a look at the one-year tab just so you guys can see in one year's time, 12 months, you can increase guaranteed by $40,000 if you're a 5,000-person festival selling at an average of $240 and have those average fees we talked about and a possible $400,000 more, $405,000 more in just 12 months time. Check it out, do yourself a favor, start to use a free ticketing company. Thanks, see you next video.